Over the last six months or so, I've been working on CNOVR. It's an open VR game engine written entirely in C. Originally, I wrote it in order to tell stories using VR, and I did get a chance to actually do that. I got to give an entire sermon to my old youth group uh, from within VR. What I've been able to do over the last few weeks has been a little bit more public, though. I got to go record some videos with my friend Josh, and I got to go do two live streams, which were a ton of fun, where we got to play around with VR in real time. Additionally, if you haven't seen the 1 minute 17 second video teaser thing, you should probably go watch that now. It's probably like hiding out on the side. For now though, I figured I would show you guys some tinkering around inside of CNOVR. And I'm going to do it on Windows, despite CNOVR primarily being developed for Linux. There's just a lot of missing features in Windows, like mixed reality and, well, it's just generally buggier in Windows. Uh, I figure a lot of people have access to Windows, and so that might be something that get more people into this and tinkering around. So I figured, what better way to show you what CNOVR is, other than to just kind of download and install it? And in fact, for this demo, the only things I really have installed, I mean, apart from like OBS and the headset, which I'm you know wearing now for the microphone, um, is GitHub Desktop, Notepad++, and uh, SteamVR. So first you can start by going into GitHub Desktop. Um, you'll need to already have signed in. And so I'm going to clone uh, from the internet, and it's going to be from HTTPS GitHub.com slash CNLore slash CNOVR. And you can clone that to some folder somewhere. It's probably best if it's a folder that doesn't have spaces, just because that's, well, more convenient. Um, so I'm going to go click Clone. The second thing that you're going to need to do is to get a copy of TinyCC. Um, so if you look on the CNOVR page, uh, under Installation Instructions for Windows, I have a link to uh, TinyCC, the version that you'll want to get. So you can get this. Uh, you can just open the folder, um, and then what you'll do is you'll dump this into C colon. So TCC goes into C colon, and I've hard-coded some of the paths in uh, CNOVR, but somebody was nice enough to actually go find those paths and like add the extra notes surrounding them. So next thing you'll do is need to go build TinyCC. And because I do everything on a whim and I commit directly to master, there's a good chance this won't work, but if you do have a problem, make sure to talk on the Discord and then you know we'll go fix it right away. Um, so C colon, projects, CNOVR, and then in here there's a file and it's called winbuild.bat. And conveniently, um, you can just run it, winbuild.bat. And this goes, compiles all of TinyCC and produces an executable, so main.exe. I can just type in main, and it'll go start tinycc, and uh, even though you can't really see it, uh, I can see the entire desktop. Um, well, this whole world. Let's see here. Let's go display VR view. Uh, so this is the view I see, and if I close the Steam overlay, um, I see a whole bunch of stuff. This is kind of like the regular construct room where it's just, just these blocks that can move around and stuff like that. So now that you've downloaded CNOVR and you've built CNOVR and you have a complete development environment, that is if you've already gotten a copy of uh, Notepad++, um, some of the things that we can do now that we have the application running here is we can edit things live. So for instance, this room right here, this default room is an example setup. And uh, its file name is example setup.json. And, uh, and in here we have all of the different components which make up this room. So for instance, I have example.c, and uh, that's what the blocks are made out of, I believe. And so we can disable that um, by saying true here. And as soon as we save, it reloads the room and there's no extra example blocks anywhere. Um, but all of the other components like the OpenVR controller there and uh, if you guys can see that up there, the, the, the base station, that, that still is loaded. Um, if we can go back and resave it, we can edit that. Uh, also, some of the things we can edit are the C files themselves. So for instance, say we wanted to edit the, uh, the example file. So uh, example.c here. Well, what we can do is we can just change things. We can change things arbitrarily um, while the code is executing. So like if I were to go over there and pick up this block and I were to move it over in front of me, then we can edit aspects of this block. Because we're using TinyCC, uh, it lets us do some really interesting things. 
Uh, because the C compiler is actually built into this uh, little one megabyte executable here, this main.exe, um, it actually will let us get away with some pretty neat stuff. So for instance, this code right here is the render function for this example room that I'm in right now. So I can change it kind of arbitrarily, where I could say take the, uh, the shader and instead of rendering it with the normal shader, I could render these blocks like this one in front of me with shader basic. As you can see, as soon as I save the file, it then goes, recompiles the code and reloads it all in memory. And it lets me go kind of play with things uh, without having to kind of go through the rigmarole of closing the app and reopening it and everything. And we could go play with it a little bit more. We could do things like, so when we're updating and we have all of these spinners that are kind of floating around, we could try playing with it and seeing, well, what, what does change? So say like, I mean, I don't know, let's just change this number to 1.0. And so now we can see that all of the blocks are moving much more like quickly, or 10, or yeah, 10.0. And so you can edit these sorts of constants really, really easily without having to go outside of the code. Um, all of this is kind of being done in RAM as it goes, and everything's fine. Now, one of the other kind of neat products of a lot of this with TinyCEC is that we can also do really terrible things and it works out most of the time. So we could say if rand of mod one maybe 200 is zero, so this would happen something maybe half of a percent of the time, then what we're gonna do is do something really, really awful. We're gonna say int star i equals five star i equals six, not or nine. So what this does, because this is C, is we can make a pointer to an actual memory address, five. And this is completely invalid. You can't write to your physical, or to the memory mapped space in address five, and we're gonna write the value nine there. But I'm gonna save this, and, well, this time it didn't quite work out, but sometimes it does. Okay, I actually had to reload. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes the crash just, you know, crashes hard. Other times it, it, other times it does quite well for itself. Um, so what we are actually going to do here is we're going to look and see, look at that. Uh, turns out in this case, it wasn't able to recover a stack trace, but many times it can actually even recover a stack trace, especially in Linux. So you can get an idea, but it's really neat that even doing things which are completely hideous and would ordinarily like crash a system, um, we can actually protect against that and just keep executing. This is a terrible idea and nobody should do it, but I do. And if you like it, you should do it too. So I'm going to just go resave that. So we uh, stop crashing everything. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's that. So you can work on things right here. You can edit the example file however you see fit, and things update in real time. One of the other kind of neat things that you can do is you can uh, edit all of the shaders real time as well. Let's go back to shader basic because that one's actually kind of simple to edit. So we're going to save the C file. So now it's using that, sh that. and what we're going to do is we're going to go into assets and then we're going to look at shader at sorry basic at dot frag and dot vert so in here uh, we have this nice little vertex shader thing we could say for instance edit the vertices without having to like you know if we wanted to tweak it for whatever reason we could make every block twice as big like that or we could make every block half as big um, and we can edit these shaders live. And it lets us kind of experiment with a lot more things, be able to get a look just right. Um, it lets you edit even the, uh, the fragment shaders as well. So like if I wanted to say, make these colors really washed out instead of really bright like this, what we could actually do is we could mix the color that we would have with one point, or VEC3 1.0 and let's say 50%. Um, and what that'll do is it'll help us wash out the colors. Maybe we want actually 90%. Um, and what, what we can do is edit all of these shaders in real time to kind of experiment and explore and not have to worry about having to, you know, go through large difficult processes. Some of the things that we can edit live are things like this object right here. So this is an OBJ file and uh, it was created with Blender and we can edit the object. So I'm going to go File, Import, OBJ. And from here, we can select the isosphere. And so now we see the isosphere 
that uh, is in our game right here. And we're going to go load it and edit it in Blender. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go make a new object now. So I can go delete that object. Let's, let's, let's see here, let's add a, a new mesh. We're gonna go add mesh and we're gonna do say a monkey. So if we switch to mesh mode, uh, you can go triangulate faces and now we have a triangulated monkey. And so if we go to file export as OBJ and we load it into the isosphere, then all of a sudden our monkey has kind of sort of, okay, you know, sometimes things go wrong. This is one of those times. Hey, there's the monkey. Okay, well, I guess sometimes the automatic reloading doesn't work. That looks like a bug, but it does make it very easy to edit things quickly and move on. For right now though, let's go back to the other shader. So let's go boop. Now we're back at the other world where we have just this normal text, test, text thing. And because we're using STB, we can load a variety of different image types. And uh, one of those that we're using right now is just a PNG file. Um, so we can go edit that. Uh, let's go, whoops. Let's go edit this in um, whatever editor Windows has here. So on the block in front of me here, I have this texture. And uh, conveniently, I can just go like edit it. So I could just go draw a smiley face or something. And what happens is, as soon as I save it, it reloads and all of the blocks and anywhere that texture is used automatically get updated. And it happens all real time. So it makes it really easy to kind of test and prototype things. So you could run something like uh, OVR ball. So I could say uh, main OVR ball, OVR ball dot JSON. And uh, this is what I ran on the live stream. And you can see it loads pretty quick. So now we're loaded on in and uh, well, actually, look at that. The ball is apparently now a monkey. Uh, that's, uh, I, uh, huh, wasn't quite expecting that, but I, I guess I should have. That makes sense. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, so something like this is just another game. All of these things can just be these little JSON files that live around everywhere and do whatever it is that you would like them to do. It's really easy to get started with this and really easy to just kind of go dink around just because you don't have to have Visual Studio or any other complicated like development environments or any like complicated setup or anything. I didn't need to reboot. I didn't need to do anything. And immediately I was able to kind of get in and was able to start playing around. You could also join the Discord, and uh, I hang out there a fair bit, so uh, people can just help you get started right away with this. Right now, it's only for uh, OpenVR platforms, which is basically just Steam VR. From there, you can do it on any of the Steam VR supported headsets. Um, yeah, this is kind of a weird project, and uh, if you liked it, go check it out, join, and like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.